Good morning, fifth grade. Today we are working with chapter two, lesson five, problem solving investigation. We are going to make a table to help us solve these problems. Let's turn to page 105. Learn the strategy. In a recent year, about 63 out of every 100 households in the United States owned at least one pet. About how many households out of 10,000 owned at least one pet? Step one, understand. What facts do you know? 63 out of every 100 households owned at least one pet. What do you need to find? How many households out of 10,000 owned at least one pet? I will make a table to solve the problem. Step three, solve. The total number of households currently for my statistic is 100. I want it to become 10,000. How can I get there? I can multiply by the power of 10. If I multiply 100 times 10, that zero transfers over and I have 1,000. Two zeros becomes three. We're closer, but not quite there. If I multiply by 10 again, I get 10,000. Three zeros becomes four. So how does that help us on the right-hand side? We are going to do the same to our number 63. Just like we did to these, in order for it to be equal, in order for that 63 out of 100 to still hold true, we need to do the same to the 63 as we did to the 100. So we're multiplying by 10. When we multiply by 10, we add a zero. The zero from the 10 transfers to the number we're multiplying it by. So 63 becomes 630, and 630 then becomes 6,300. So about 6,000 300 out of 10,000 households owned at least one pet. Step four, check. Is my answer reasonable? Explain. We can use mental math to multiply. If we were to multiply 63 times 100, what would we get? Well, 63 times one, is 63, and then those two zeros transfer, 6,300. Yes, our answer is reasonable. The second problem. Nestor is saving money to buy a new camping tent. Each week, he doubles the amount he saved the previous week. If he saves $1 the first week, how much money will Nestor save in seven weeks? Step one, understand. What facts do you know? Okay, let's go back into the problem. We know that each week he doubles the amount he saved the previous week. We also know that he saved $1 the first week. What do you need to find? Okay, we need to find, according to that question, we need to find out how much money will Nestor save in seven weeks if he saved $1 in the first week. Step two, plan. Just like with our first one, we will make a table to solve the problem.
For this table, we need to know how many weeks, and then we need to keep track of how much money he saves each week if it doubles every week. So in the first week, we know he made $1, okay? If that $1 doubled in the second week, he would have $2. If that $2 doubled in the third week, he would have $4. If that $4 doubled, he would have $8. If that $8 doubled, he would have 16. If that $16 doubled, he would have 32. And if that $32 doubled, he would have 64. Then we are not quite done yet because he did not lose the money that he saved in the previous weeks. So we need to add up all of that money. What would he have, have saved total if we add all of these numbers together? If we were to add the amount of money he saved each week, $1 plus $2 plus $4 plus $8 and so forth, Nestor will have saved $127 in seven weeks. How can we check to see if our answer is reasonable? We can round each two-digit number to the nearest $10 and see if the, our approximate answer is close to our exact answer. Okay, so $16 rounds up to $20. $32 would round down to 30, if it were rounding to the nearest 10. $64 would round down to 60. And that makes it a little easier to add. So 60 plus 30 is 90. 90 plus 20 is 110, 110 plus 8 is 118, 122, 124, 125. 125 is actually quite close to 127. So yes, our answer is reasonable. That concludes your direct instruction for today. Go ahead and work on pages 107 and 108 applying the strategy. Have a great day. See you soon.